how to deal with super crazy buildup on cast iron skillets. Hi, Jed from Cook Culture. So I've got my hands on a couple of cast iron lodge skillets that have seen better days. They've got some serious, serious, serious buildup on them. And all the basic quick and easy, you know, stovetop, easy, quick kitchen methods to clean these just isn't gonna work. This is a, this is a, a major surgery that things have to go through. And the reality is that I need to take out the big guns. I've got to use some physical methods to take the build up right off these pans. So I'm going to step out of the kitchen because this is kind of a messy, messy job. Uh, and we're going to cook these pans for many hours to dry out the, the, the coating that's on them. And then I'm going to physically take these pans down to their metal and recondition them. Okay, so here I am at the beach. I am outside of course because i'm going to grind this surface down using a power drill and a few different attachments so i've got a, a sanding attachment that is a whole bunch of pieces of heavy grit sandpaper and some wire wheels three different styles of wire wheels and i'm going to go into this surface and just go right down to bare metal so this surface here is so incredibly crusty and so caked on that like no amount of soaking or barkeeper's friend or whatever is going to do much to this it's like built up like armor it's so incredibly built up on here um you know it's got built up and then it's got seasoning pock marks or or carbon park pock marks all over and it's got multi layers of years and years and years of stuff going on in here so not hard uh it's just going to take a bit of work um, you know, lots of people suggest, oh, you know, use this amount of citric acid and use this and use that. And I found that any of the detergents, just, it doesn't work. So what I'm gonna do is go to work with these. Okay, so here we are. That's that big pan that I worked on uh, for hours, probably four or five solid hours on this pan of just working and working, and working, getting through the first few layers of the, of the seasoning and the grime and the grit. It took a lot of time to get that off. I had cooked it in the oven, so it was as dry as I could get it, but it still had layers of greasy and gumminess in it. Once I got that done, I got into the rust layers and started to peel the rust back and all the deposits in there. And that was lots of different <laughs> of layering, peeling, and trying to figure out where the bottom of the pan was. And then the silver started to show itself and that was very satisfying. So I've got this to, you know, 98% perfect. You know, there's a little bit of residue on here, but it's gonna season perfectly. So now I'm going to apply our cook culture paste and I am going to cook this three times in the oven with a micro layer of paste on it three times to start with in the oven uh, and then cook it inverted for an hour at 400 degrees. Okay so here's the little pan. I have taken the surface right down to metal uh, it was pretty intensely built up. There was no way using any other method except for a physical process that I was going to get the buildup off this pan. It just wasn't going to happen. It was, there was so much, especially in the corners, it just needed so much work. So I finished the, the big pan and here's a picture of it here. 
and it has gone back to the owner so she can start using this. This one here, I just wanted to spend a bit more time in the corners. Uh, I found the corners were a little sharper in the smaller pan and I, my tool that I had that I was using for the big pan didn't work as well in the little pan. So I just also wanted to share that with you. So the tool that I used primarily is this guy here. It's all rounded on the edge. It comes actually square, but this I get from Home Depot and it comes in a, a package with a bunch of different pieces. Um, but basically this is just 80 grit sandpaper on uh, a piece that I put on the drill. And I just work and work and work away on that and it works brilliantly well. That's after I bake these guys dry. So I put them in the oven and I bake them for hours to make sure that I dry it out. Because if you have a really gummy surface and you start trying to sandpaper, it just is just a mess. So that works. When it didn't work as well, um, I would use this tool and this worked really, really well for me. Uh, for, for kind of working on certain areas that I wanted to kind of pinpoint because of just working kind of on that edge. And then getting into these corners on this pan, I used this stripper. And this worked really well for getting into right into the corners. It didn't work as well as generally using the sandpaper. Sandpaper, I could get more volume, more surface area, but getting into those corners worked really well with that. So those are the three tools that I used. And that's gotten that in a perfect shape now. And what's gonna happen, I'm going to put this onto the stove top, heat it a bit. I'm gonna put some seasoning wax on there. And then I'm gonna put it through three different one hour sessions in a 400 degree oven for some pre-seasoning. Okay, so here we are. That pan is in beauty shape. So we've done two full rounds in the oven and I'm gonna do one more and then it's gonna be ready for daily use. So it'll take a while to build up a real nonstick finish. So I'm using our beeswax here for the seasoning paste and I would keep using that post seasoning. And I've got some videos about how to do that once you're using it how to clean it with chain mail, and then reapply the wax and post season on the, the stove top. I'm doing the pre-seasoning in the oven on this guy, um, but once you start cooking with this pan, you would be just doing simple post seasoning if needed. It doesn't have to be done every time, um, but it's pretty critical to be doing it very often as the pan is fresh. This is a very fragile seasoning. It's only had two small coats. It really needs dozens of really hard polymerized seasoning coatings to become nonstick and to be strong enough to take daily abuse for whatever it is that you're doing with overheating, using metal tools, cooking something a bit acidic once in a while. That can all be done with a really, really bomb proof coating, but that coating takes some time to build up. Cooking is the best way to get it there. You can keep doing oven seasonings, you can do lots of post seasoning, but really cooking under the right sort of temperatures uh, and not using too much oil that has too much fiber in it, trying to use very fiberless oils as you cook uh, is better for your nonstick. The more fiber that is cooked onto the pan, the more you can have carbonization that, that builds up. It's that kind of black finish on there that can peel and take your seasoning off. So I've got other videos that addresses carbonization and the type of oils to use. Uh, so you can check those out. Uh, but this pan is basically ready to go. So I hope this whole process has helped you want to take on a project like this. Definitely takes some time and some effort, but it's so satisfying. You know, you take a pan here that really would have been garbage and now this pan is gonna last for decades, you know, and maybe in a few decades, somebody will do this again, um, but this pan will go on and on and on and on, generation after generation, if it's looked after or maintained properly. So I hope this helps. Any questions, please throw them below. Thank you very much, take care.